<sighs> so, hey, here we go. I keep forgetting that some, a lot of people out there don't know about this stuff and then I get some friends send me some things and they're like, hey, have you heard of this? And I'm like, yeah, and we're going to have a bit of a background noise as well. Um, it's my beautiful daughter, Dahlia, in case you weren't aware, but the focus right now is the educational aspect here. Um, she's complaining about the TV, so the fact that I don't have it on to distract her. First of all, we need some awareness around what the hypothalamus is. The hypothalamus is a structure deep within your brain. It's in the main, it is the main link between your endocrine system and your nervous system. Your hypothalamus keeps your body balanced in a stable state called homeostasis. What does it do? <laughs> all right. Your hypothalamus receives chemical messages from your nerve cells in your brain, from nerve cells in your body, your peripheral nervous system, which is also responding to signals outside your body. Your hypothalamus's main function is to react to these messages to keep your body in a stable state or interior balance. Just like you may have a smart control system to seamlessly manage all functions in your home, your hypothalamus is your body's smart control coordinating center. Your hypothalamus helps your body manage body temperature, blood pressure, hunger and thirst, sense of fullness when eating. You know, when you eat a salad and you just don't quite have that, oh yeah, I'm nice and full feeling. That's actually got nothing to do with your meat. That's got to do with your hypothalamus. Mood, sex drive, sleep. Your hypothalamus performs many of its body balancing jobs either by directly influencing your hypothalamus performs many of its body balancing jobs either by directly influencing the autonomic, autonomic nervous system or by managing hormones. Your autonomic nervous system bodily functions that work automatically, those ones that you've got no control over, i.e. most of your body, right, control several important functions such as your heart rate, your breathing, and your whole entire respiratory, respiratory system. Hormones are the chemical messengers that travel in your bloodstream to another part of your body. Hormones communicate either with another endocrine gland, which releases more hormones, or with specific organs or other parts of the body. Your hypothalamus makes some hormones itself that are stored elsewhere, uh, mostly in your posterior pituitary. Sends signals to the hypothalamus, sends signals or hormones to your pituitary gland, which either releases more hormones pom, 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 that directly affect part of your body, or sends another signal hormone to a different gland in your body that then releases its hormone, say your adrenal glands, or your um, testicles, or your ovaries. How does the hypothalamus interact with the pituitary? Your pituitary gland sits just below the hypothalamus. It consists of two lobes called the anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. Your hypothalamus is connected to and communicates with your anterior lobe through a network of blood vessels. It communicates with your posterior lobe by tissue called the pituitary stalk. Your hypothalamus sends signals in the form of releasing hormones to the anterior and posterior pituitary when to release or secrete its hormones. The anterior pituitary, just to run through a couple of the hormones that bounce between the hypothalamus and the pituitary and the effect of these, the biggest one that you need to be aware of is the growth hormone. Okay, so the hypothalamus releases growth hormones, uh, signaling hormones. The pituitary is the one that produces the growth hormones. These go directly into all the bones and muscles of the body. Uh, this is basically what stimulates new cellular production. Growth hormone is a phenomenal area of research in medical literature at the moment, and it is something everybody should be aware of. If you want to heal a part of yourself, you need more growth hormones. That's what's going to help you a lot, amongst other things. Then we have the GNRH which signals the FSH and the LH. Now, some of these get really technical. I'm gonna try a couple of them, and, but then I'm just gonna default back to the codes uh, where we can uh, just to save time, I guess. So the gonadotropin releasing hormone, releasing, because it's gangster, the GNRH, then signals the pituitary to release 
follicle stimulating hormone FSH and luteinizing hormone the LH now this is an interesting one it goes different ways in, in males and females in males the LH causes testicles to make testosterone the FSH controls sperm production in females LH and FSH control the menstrual cycle and trigger the release of an egg from the ovary then we have the CRH, CRH, which triggers the ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone, uh, which travels to your adrenal glands, causes your adrenal glands to release stress hormones, cortisol, <laughs> pump that, and regulate metabolism and immune response. Metabolism, your diet, your capacity to be able to process food and extract energy from that, and including your immune response. Your whole entire immune system is governed by your hypothalamus. And then your pituitary and the rest of it, and it's all one system. This is hugely important why I'm focusing on the um, hypothalamus, so I'll get to that in a minute. The, TR, the TRH, the thyrotropin release on hormone, stimulates the thyroid stimulating hormone, which travels to the thyroid gland, causes your thyroid to release thyroxine, or T4, and triodothyronine triodothyronine or t3 uh dopamine which obviously stimulates prolactin and if you've ever had a baby or you're a woman who's trying to produce milk bingo goes directly to breast tissue to produce breast milk amongst other things now the posterior pituitary sounds like something you want to say with a um a monocle, you know, <laughs> the posterior pituitary. Your hypothalamus makes two hormones but stores them in the posterior pituitary. When these hormones are needed, your hypothalamus sends a signal to the posterior to pituitary to release them into the bloodstream. These two hormones are oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin, this hormone assists in the birthing process, stimulates uterine muscle contraction and lactation. The release of breast milk, in case you were wondering. It's also thought to play a role in human bonding, sexual arousal, trust, recognition, sleep cycle, and feelings of well-being. Oxytocin, very important, and it's also one that's absolutely manipulated using modern-day technology to create oxytocin dependency. Vasopressin, this hormone also called the antidiuretic hormone, or the ADH, Regulates control of your body's water and urine volume and blood pressure. Urine. Urine! You. Anyway, other roles of the hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus also produces these hormones. Dopamine is the feel good hormone. It gives you a sense of pleasure, it gives you the motivation to do something when you're feeling pleasure. Dopamine signals the pituitary to stop releasing prolactin. Do you need to stop pumping milk? Dopamine is your friend there. Somatostatin. This hormone prevents the secretion of several other hormones, including growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, cholecostokinin, and insulin. In turn, all these hormones control the production of somatostatin. Somatostatin. So that's a regulatory hormone that governs the production and when to switch off and switch on of certain other things in your body, amongst other things as well. All of these things are crazy in terms of how many things they actually do in your body. And this is definitely not a comprehensive list in any capacity. List not exhaustive, as some would say. Your hypothalamus also corrects any imbalances in body temperature, stress, and your daily bodily rhythms. Rhythm in your body. Anatomy is where is the hypothalamus located? It is located which, uh, sorry, it is about the size of an almond, located below the thalamus and above the pituitary gland. It sits directly above the brain stem at the base of your brain. I've got some images for you in a second. What happens if the hypothalamus is damaged? All sorts of things! 
when your hypothalamus is damaged, it doesn't function as it should. Another term for when there's a problem with your hypothalamus is hypothalamic dysfunction. Causes of hypothalamic dysfunction include head injuries, such as traumatic brain injury, brain infection, brain tumor in or around your hypothalamus or brain aneurysms, significant weight loss caused by eating disorders such as bulimia and anorexia. And, um, <laughs> Just makes me think of Zoolander. Neither of those mean that you're tele telepathic. <laughs> Brain surgery can do this. Radiation therapy and chemotherapy can do this. Br birth defects involving brain or hypothalamus. Inflammatory diseases including multiple sclerosis and neurosarcoidosis. Some genetic disorders such as growth hormone deficiency. Um, plays a role in a whole bunch of different things, and I listed most of them in the name of this video. What are your symptoms of hypothalamus dysfunction? Could be high blood pressure, low blood pressure, water retention or dehydration, weight loss, weight gain, without changes in appetite or with changes in appetite, depending upon your capacity to deal with stress, which is directly tied in with your hypothalamus. Infertility, poor bone health, delayed puberty, muscle loss and weakness, body temperature fluctuations, trouble sleeping, frequent need to pee, and um, oh, so many other things. All right. So, with all of the technical stuff out of the way, well, it's not really a good image of it, but this is a hyper, it's like a roadmap image, not a direct an anatomical image, but this is directly tied in with the eye, and this is where we're going with this. Okay, so part of your vision circulates through the hypothalamus. This is so very important because I need you to understand that what you see triggers and releases your capacity to be able to regulate your body. And I'm not talking about you as in like, oh, wow, that makes me really happy. I might just trigger some dopamine, okay? These are systems inside of your body that you've got no control over. You just regulate your daily life by your choice. And your choice is not only, oh, it's time to have a coffee, or maybe it's time to go to sleep, or should I do the job that I've been told to do, or should I tell my boss to go fuck himself? No, it's got nothing to do with your choices like that. It's got to do with your choices on whether or not you see the world as loving and capable of being embraced, or whether you see the world as full of prickly, scary, thorny things. What this is going to do is it's going to directly impact how you see the world. Not only will it degrade your vision and your capability to be able to retain your vision through your age, yes, you don't have to lose your vision as everybody thinks you do, uh, rather, as everybody says that you do, there are ways that you do lose your vision, but generally speaking, most of the ways in our society that people say, oh, as you get older, you need reading glasses, is full of crap. That's like saying, as you get older, your muscles deteriorate because you stop doing things. You need to regularly exercise. You need to look after yourself, maintain proper diet and mental health and acuity in order to be able to regulate all of these systems and make sure that they keep up with themselves. The very first thing that you need to understand about this amazing information here and why it's important to you is because if you see the world as a threatening, scary place, news, floods, violence, terrorism everywhere, the Illuminati everywhere, all of this crazy stuff, don't get caught up in the fear is what everybody talks about. Why? Because your fear is your choice. Your love is your choice. These are the two choices that we have on a daily basis. You don't have much impact over whether or not Jeffrey over here is going to say, hey, how are you going? Or whether or not Jeffrey over here is going to say, you suck. Now, either one of these is your choice in how to react to. Between stimulation and response is your choice in how you actually take on information. And this is where it comes into your capable power of being a creator of your reality. How? Your whole entire biological system governs under whether or not you want to interact with or run away from this world. If you have the capacity to be able to look at any circumstance, regardless of whether it's threatening or not, uh, or loving or not, is what your hormone's going to be doing. If you see somebody who gives you a whole bunch of stress, then as soon as they enter into your your, your visual field, not to mention your mental field, like even if you just think about them, this sort of thing happens automatically. But we're talking about the eyes and the hypothalamus. If you see this person 
immediately the visual signals will be sent through the hypothalamus which will trigger a positive or negative response. If your hypothalamus is triggering a negative response and it's signaling cortisol, it's signaling other stress hormones and it's deteriorating other parts of your body very rapidly and very quickly. What happens if everything is threatening? Mm. Mm. If everything is threatening, then everything that I'm looking at is a worry. Oh, I've got to pay the rent. Oh, I've got to get to work on time. Oh, this workplace sucks. Oh my God, my wife just keeps going on and on and on. My kids irritate me. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Everything that you look at as a positive or a negative impacts your capacity to be able to grow, heal, or destroy yourself. <laughs> What I mean by that is if you don't regulate your system and put yourself into a homeostatic state, then everything that you're looking at, everything that you're thinking about, even when you close your eyes and you see the visual images play or you have the thoughts that play, even if you're uh, aphantastic, meaning you can't see things all that well in your visual uh, imagination, then you, all of these things are triggering stress hormones, usually firing off from the hypothalamus and the pituitary in combination to regulate and govern the rest of your body. Very important, like it is in your house, to take the garbage out. If you don't take the garbage out, it builds up and it builds up and it builds up until you can't move anymore. I need to go to the toilet, but I can't get there because there's an ocean of garbage in the way. That's when shit breaks down, okay? Breaks down and the medical system won't tell you about this because they look at the symptoms. So they'll look at it breaking down and they'll say, well, it seems like you have a problem with your hypothalamus there. They won't say, well, it seems like you have a problem with your hypothalamus because you haven't been cleaning the fucking garbage out, <laughs> to put it softly. Now, what you can do, first of all, is breathe. Breathing is one of the most amazing signal systems for your whole entire body. Let's play a role-playing game. You're running away from a tiger. I'm really fucking stressed. I'm pumping all sorts of stress hormones through my body. And then I get to safety and I go... <sighs> and my breathing starts to calm down. Your breath signals the transition from a stress-based state to a positive rest-based state. At that point in time, your whole entire body will start producing a different set of hormones that will start to clean out these other hormones that have been gathering up that you no longer need anymore. Do you have too much cortisol weighing upon your adrenal glands causing you kidney dysfunction? Well, maybe you should get rid of some of the adrenal issues surrounding the flood of hormones that are swimming through this thing. These hormones are designed to go really fast, really quickly. Uh, however, like anything, if you run anything too fast, too quickly for a long amount of time, it starts to go and break and shatter very quickly. What you need is rest. You need to return to a homeostatic stasis. And everything in our society is basically geared to make sure that you can't do that. The screens that we all operate under, this telephone that I'm using to be able to talk to you through, all of these things, the screen flicker rates, the 60 hertz, the 50 hertz, all of these things are designed in a certain, the blue light, all of these things are designed to be able to, as the patents state in the literal, um, files available through patent offices, you can find that they stimulate um, epidermal excitation, which is the excitation of your skin layers, meaning that even while you sleep in front of the TV, your skin is going like this all night long. And that's why most of the time you can't rest very well because while you're resting, your body is going <laughs> <laughs> all over the place and that's why you can't close your eyes and meditate is because it's too much you'd be there going oh my god i can't close my eyes because nightmares play in front of my face why because you've got a build up of this stuff in your body you're swamped with it so if you're flooded with health problems right now the very first thing that you need to do aside from make sure that you're not dying immediately is go to the gp make sure that you've got uh, the capacity to be able to interpret medical information as well. Don't just blindly follow along with salesmen, right? There are lots of salespeople out there, masked as professionals, who we should force to have their sponsors displayed on their logos like racing car drivers. Although, 
their sponsors displayed on their logos, their sponsors displayed on their uniforms, like race car drivers and other sports stars like that, we would see very quickly why they're referencing this drug over this drug, and most of the time they'll be very honest with you, I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll give it a try anyway, and we'll see what happens. If this happens, let me know, and then we can adjust it over here, we can make sure that this happens, okay? Whatever the case is, you need to regulate your body back into a homeostatic stasis. This will flush your system of all the buildup of all of these stress hormones, which will then give you the capacity to start producing growth hormones um, and other, I, can't, I don't have the list of amazing hormones that you want to be producing right now. Interleukin-2 is one for cancer fighting. Um, there's so many amazing ones like this that you just need in your body on a regular daily basis that you're not getting because everything that you're looking at in your visual field is threatening. Society, bills, paying the rent, uh, looking at your bank account is a huge stress for people. Most people can't even log into their bank account without going, <laughs> right? All of these things are producing an overflow of hormones and issues within your body. Take it slow. Go back to the start. You're an amazing healer. You're an amazing creator. And you have more power than I can ever describe to you, literally. I can't put the amount of power and what you're capable of doing into words in the English language. We do not have enough words and we do not have the words that I need to be able to describe to you what you are, how you are capable of doing all of this, and why you are being prevented from doing so. But first of all, it starts with learning how to regulate your own biorhythmic cycles. Number one, see the world with love. Accept your threats as what they are. That doesn't mean that you're ignoring them. Accept them as threats. Acceptance is a fantastic way to turn a negative emotion into the beginning of a positive experience. That might be a very paradoxical thing for some people to comprehend. But if you're on the evolutionary path of personal growth and other things like that, then you will understand what I'm saying. And you'll be like, yes! <laughs> I love you all. See all of reality as love and watch your whole body and experience change as you begin to regulate your body in a different capacity, bringing all of your blood pressure, all of your hormones in check and thus healing your body instead of constantly beating on it and blaming it on the things around you. You are the one with power. The power is inside of you and your skill and capacity to use that is what we call empowerment. You can do this. I know you can. I love you. Have a wonderful day.